Okay, so today we are in a 2008 R56 Mini. So we, and I'll tell you what's going on here. Um, got a wonderful, great big long page thing from the Mini dealer. Um, I'm not gonna show you all of that, but basically, customer bought it at auction it had no DME so they stuck one in there and couldn't figure out why it wouldn't start because they put in ECU in there right well the only problem is um, it has different data in it mainly the ISN so we're gonna take you through how we read the ISN from the DME and then put it into the CAS module and hopefully we can get this thing started First off, we go online, we select many, and we have a battery charger on this. It's hard to see, but yes, there's a battery charger under the hood. Okay, so it's an R56 Mini Cooper. Um, and when we go to, it'll bring up the, um, the whatchamacallit, you know, the thingamajig. How about the VIN, the VIN number? And one thing we usually find on these, when we're doing one of these, um, okay, so the programming date was 1216. Oh. Huh. Program version. Program part number, okay. Operating software, oh, this ought to be fun. So fault codes. Look at that, DME EWS anti-tampering. No message from the electronic gear shifter, receiver, transmitter. Well, I'm wondering, they might have got the wrong one in here. Um, Cause this is a stick shift. So, basically, we're going to go back. We should be able to get it to um, at least start. And then we'll worry about the electronic gear shift coding. And yes, it's taking forever. Ever since the British went online with everything, it just takes forever. Because you know what? Going from here all the way to Bulgaria to the server and back is a long way. And it basically has to go over a bunch of different networks. Trying to explain that to an engineer in Bulgaria. Yeah, they really don't give a shit. So we're gonna wait for this to sync up. Okay, after forever and a day, we just said screw it. So now, you can see that we have a working key because it says key in the ignition. Okay. So we're going to look at ISN codes. Let's see if we can read the ISN and the DME. Is the yes, DME is replaced. I got a funny feeling this will come back and say, oh, I'll be damned. It read it right away. Didn't even need to um, hopefully this is just Kaz uh -oh. mismatched ISNs. Hmm. Okay, so we're going to have to reflash this. Okay, so remaining time, eight minutes. Once again, we're going to sit here and wait. And like usual, make sure you have a battery charger on this and something hooked up powering up your internet and also your laptop. I guess we'll click on this when it gets closer to the end. 
Okay, been about 15 minutes or so. And it says, upload complete finishing programming. This is where you change your underwear and you do this with your fingers, your toes, your nose hairs, everything you got. You cross them and pray. Pray to whoever. Please. Say a few things, nice things, like, please. I won't drink. I won't drink again. Okay, upload complete. Trying to enter key mode. Okay, so now we've read our ISN after we've repaired or did whatever to the ISN. Now, seeing as this is a 2008, it could be, it could be a wonderful encrypted, or it might not. So what we're going to do is, we're going to show you how to change it. And what we're going to do is, we're going to go right here. You can see how that little line, it's hard to see, but there's a little yellow line. So we're going to copy 5, 2, 6C, and I'm going to put the phone down and start up again when I'm done. Okay, now you can see that we took what's in the DME and we copied it over to the CAS. And now what we're going to do is we're going to click Save, Write Success. Okay, so now our CAS has the same ISN. as the DME. So what we're going to do is we're going to back up one. And we are going to synchronize CAS and DME and see if it'll work. If it doesn't, then we'll go back and we'll encrypt. Okay. So now we're going to go to ISN codes. And we're going to go for a DME. Okay. Bad synchronization. So, a lot of times, you have to go back. And you have to go here. And don't be in a hurry. And usually what you do is you clear all the codes. And a lot of times, you can... Yeah, a lot of times the DME, EWS tampering, a lot of times you have to clear them and then get rid of the um, get rid of the faults in both of them disconnect the battery for 45 minutes and then hook it up clear those again and then do it again okay so we're back now we look at the ISN codes and I'm thinking this is a CAS 3 Plus because it's been back to the dealer. But if you notice, both of those ISNs are the same. Now watch what happens when I hit Encrypt CAS ISN. Usually it tells you to take the key out. And as I said, this isn't something you want to have a deadline. You better give yourself some time because it is going to take forever and a day. 
Okay, so it said put a working key in the antenna. And I did. And if you noticed, it changes the data. So this ISN equals out to this once it's encrypted. Well, now that it's encrypted, we're going to click the Save button. And you'll see it. It's reading the flash, doing what it can. I'm going to turn the four ways on just to now see where it says write success. Okay, so now we have found the ISN from the DME. We have wrote it into the CAS. Then we have encrypted it and wrote it again. So now we're going to go back one. And just for the heck of it, we're going to see if we can synchronize the CAS and the DME. Okay, so now we're going to put a key in the ignition. Now we're going to go to ISNs and hopefully let's see what the sync status says. Synchronization okay. So now what we have done is we read, we reflashed the DME, we read its ISN, then we went down to the CAS, we inputted that exact same ISN, then after we found out that it wouldn't sync, we went to CAS and we went to encrypt CAS ISN, then we clicked on the write button and we let it write the encrypted ISN into the CAS. Now you're probably asking yourself, why in the hell do you have to do all of that? Because all these damn cars were getting stolen so easily, what they did is they put, they encrypt it in the CAS and, and I'm not sure. I've had a couple engineers tell me different things, but what I was told is the DME actually has a function to unencrypt it. So when it gets there, it sees the correct ISN. So, we're going to see if this thing will pop over. How about that? Start it up. It's running. And I think we're going to have to go through and check some coding and stuff. But I just wanted to read you what it says on the bottom of this. It says... Um, Vehicle needs new DME control unit. Gone over vehicle and found some corrosion. Strongly believe that DME has been tampered with. Looked into the DME CAS alignment that the customer was asking about. And this is not a function available on this module. Referenced initial training manual for the release of this module and found section that pertains to this topic. 128-bit secret key is encrypted in the CAS and the DME, and the key is only known by the BMW group. Encryption is locked into the CAS and DME, and once entered by the factory, that secret key can no longer be changed or deleted. Due to the appearance of the DME, it appears to have been tampered with and will need to start with a replacing DME. Customer declined DME replacement at this time. So, basically, if you go to Mini or BMW, they are going to sell you a brand new DME. We just programmed a used DME into this vehicle. We're going to finish up with a couple other little tweaks and then we'll see how this works out. But we just saved the customer a whole bunch of money on this. As they say at a Britus, bring on the next one.